What do you get from a $1,000 headphone? Well... These are the Focal Celestes, and they are probably one of the most beautiful headphones that I now own. They're absolutely exquisite looking. This is one of the most luxurious looking headphones I've ever seen. And my God, the build quality is pretty outstanding. Focal is a brand that we have not really talked about before because these are in fact the first Focal headphones I've ever owned. This is kind of an entry point to Focal for me. And I think for a lot of people, this is sort of an entry point for Focal. Focal headphones tend to be more in the high-end category for headphones, at least in the terms of their price tag. So believe it or not, this $1,000 headphone is one of the more affordable Focals out there. So, but I think it's a good representation of what we can expect from a Focal headphone, and maybe an expectation of what to expect from a $1,000 and above headphone in general. So let's take a look at the build. Here they are, the Focals, the Celestes. They are striking. They're gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Now. The color scheme of this headphone is a little difficult to actually identify on camera. I've seen it come out looking green. I've seen it come out looking gray. I've seen it come out looking blue. It's hard to know exactly what you're looking at until you're looking at it physically in your own hands. But I'll tell you that here in this room, looking at it right now, this color is kind of like a navy with a little hint of green in there. So when you're looking at this, try to picture that. No matter what the color may look like to you right now, this is kind of a navy blue with a little, just the slightest hint of green in there. And then this, these metal colored accents are kind of a rose gold, almost copper, but not quite. I, I'd say they edge more towards a rose gold. So you got kind of a rose gold, slightly copper accent to a navy, slightly a, a navy and slightly green overall color scheme it's it's beautiful it's not for everybody obviously some of you might look at this and think oh god that looks really gaudy but it for me is an absolutely gorgeous color scheme so looking at our build here we got lots of really impressive choices and materials the cup is a combination of metal parts and plastic parts. This entire little coin section right here that has the Celesti branding on here, this is metal. 
The actual surface of the cup is a metal mesh with a f faux leather shielding underneath covering the driver because this is a closed back headphone. We have a very nice, robust plastic around the cup. And then the yoke itself is a nice spring steel with very lovely machined uh, connectors from the yoke to the chassis of the driver. It's very, very subtle. I like it a lot. I love that it matches the color. It's great. Moving up the yoke, we have our Focal logo here on a nice plastic adjusting bracket right here that has some nice bevels along the edges that again matches the color scheme. The adjusting mechanism is a clicking mechanism. It just sort of like so. Here's what it sounds like. It's pretty satisfying. It's not the firmest adjustment. It will slip a little bit if you put too much force on it, but it's never been too much of a problem for me. I've been able to kind of set it to a certain size and leave it there easy peasy. And especially when I'm wearing the hat, then I just kind of adjust it all the way and it fits me perfect. Without the hat, I have to make it just, you know, a couple clicks smaller, but otherwise it's great. The headband is this wonderful protein leather on the top wrapped around what is a not very flexible stainless steel I assume support and then underneath on the underside of the pad is this extremely soft I don't know if it's microfiber suede or an actual leather suede but it feels lovely it's extremely soft you don't have a tremendous amount of padding but again that suede is so soft and the little bit of padding that is there I have found to be more than substantial. Next, let's take a look at the pads. The pads, of course, match the color scheme because why the hell not? The pads are removable, though they are a kind of third-party attaching clicking system. They just have these little knobs that snap into these holes on the side of the driver here. And first of all, let's take a look at this driver. There it is there behind this metal honeycomb frame. You have the actual driver. So looks lovely, but let's take a minute to look at these pads. They have the same color scheme. They are the same color. They look great. They are very, very soft. They're actually really, really lovely. If you look here, you got plenty of kind of cushioning going on, plenty of plushness. It's great. And they're a bit of a hybrid pad. They're a solid protein leather on the side and on the face. But on the inside, we have a breathable fabric. So you got fabric on the inside, leather on the face, and leather on the outside. These are great pads. I'm not a huge fan of it being a kind of proprietary clipping system, but at least they're pretty easy to replace and you're not stuck with them. Let's snap these back on here just like so. Click, click, it's on. So that's great. At the bottom here, we have our dual entry. For the cable, we have our right and our left channel, which are marked R and L. It's not the best utilization of marking. Having it at the very bottom of the headphone is not ideal, but it'll do. You'll notice how deep these are and how wide they are. These are three and a half millimeter ports, and you can use pretty much any three and a half millimeter cable as a replacement for these, which is great, but there is some depth you have to account for. Luckily, the space here is quite large, so most cables should be able to fit in there. It won't be a perfect fit. I've None of my other cables fit this perfectly. Only the cable that it came with has been able to fit it perfectly. And on that note, let's take a look at some of the accessories. We saw this in the beginning of the video in the unboxing, but it comes with this really, really nice carrying case. You got your Focal logo on there, which is a nice metal badge. It's this very lovely woven bag. It feels great. It looks really nice. It's a little bulky. It's not the most portable thing ever, but you know what? It'll do. The handle on here is interesting. It is a fake leather handle that slips and slides through these tiny little portions here at the ends so that it could sit flush against the bag like so, or you can pull it to be able to actually use it as a handle. So let's take a look inside the bag.
The zippers are very, very good quality zippers. They sound great. And inside, it just is a wonderful fit. The headphones fit in here great, perfectly. The inside is a, a very firm mold. It's not particularly soft, but it's very, very firm and it, it, it's perfectly molded to the headphone. So I'm not at all concerned about the headphone getting damaged inside of this thing. All right, let's take a look at the cable. And here it is. Now this is kind of interesting because Focal notoriously has always come with two sets of cables. Usually your standard cable and then also a balanced cable variant. This is the first time in one of these kind of higher end Focals that they only come with the one cable. It's also a very different cable from what Focal is usually known for. Focal cables are normally known for their kind of very, very firm, very, very, almost, almost semi-flat sort of braid. And they look really, really nice, but have a problem of being very, very janky and having a hard time getting that jank to kind of fold out. So this is a, de this is a departure from those cables. But let's take a little closer look at it because while it is a different cable, it's actually quite nice. Well, my top camera died on me. So unfortunately the continuity might not be perfect, but I hope you can just be okay with that. Anyway, here is our cable. It is a dual three and a half millimeter cable. And you can see the machining on here is actually really, really nice. They are nice, nice and fat. They got these L and R markings on here and your full cowl on there. They look really, really great. The machining is awesome. And I do appreciate that they're labeled. Unfortunately, when you plug them into the headphone, that R where that is printed goes inside the headphone so you can no longer see it. Not ideal, but it is what it is. Going down, we have a pretty nice splitter that matches our aesthetic and our build. It is all metal, of course. And then at the tail end, matching the machining, we have another three and a half millimeter that does have the option to screw on a quarter inch adapter. So it's a nice cable. It's built very well. It is a rubberized cable. And unfortunately, as you can see, it's still a little jank. It's still got curls and whatever in it. And I've had this out for a while, but the jank remains. I have not been able to get the jank out. So unfortunately, I think Focal still kind of suffers from this overall jankiness and stiffness of their cables but eh, it's still built very, very well and it looks really, really nice. It's not the longest cable ever. You're looking at, man, it's pretty short. It's maybe four feet, maybe. It, it, it's kind of too short even for me and I kind of like short cables because of the way that it kind of janks around like this and it does it so firmly. This is a fairly, I don't want to say it's a heavy cable. It's not a heavy cable, but it's a very stiff cable, rubberized cable in here. So having it kind of janked around like this will pull a little bit. So it's, mm, it's just not, it's not great. It's not ideal. I wish it was more drapey and flowy. I think it would help a lot considering how short it is, but eh, it's fine. At least it's built very, very well. I wish it was braided though. I'm surprised that they went with this kind of just rubberized aesthetic. Let's move on to comfort. It shouldn't be that surprising to you that these are actually quite, quite comfortable. They are a little on the heavy side. There's a lot of metal being used here and a lot of very dense plastics. So there's a good amount of weight to this. But that being said, the weight distribution is actually done very, very well. Because the underside of the, of the headband is so soft, it feels great against your head. It's also fairly wide. It's not super ridiculously wide, but it's wide enough that it does a pretty good job of even distribution on top of the head. So I'm not really getting much in terms of head discomfort. I feel the headband on the head, but it's so soft and it's so evenly distributed that it's just not a problem. It feels honestly quite nice. We do have some clamp force and the clamp force is okay. It feels at first like it's maybe a little harsh, but because these pads are so soft and because the headphone is able to do a pretty decent job of kind of molding to your head shape, 
it just kind of isn't much of a bother. I was worried about it at first because even right now, having not been wearing them for a minute and now I'm wearing them again, I feel just the slightest bit of pressure right here at the bottom near my jawline, but it goes away pretty quickly. After another minute of wearing this, I'm not going to notice that anymore. So even though it is relying a bit more on the clamp force to keep the headphone on the head, it's really not bad. I'm pretty dang okay with it. I right now feel great. This feels really, really nice. And I've been able to wear these for hours without any issue. I even took a weekend to just kind of walk around the house with these, not plugged into anything, just to see how they do. And they did a really great job. So the overall comfort is actually really excellent. What I will say in terms of the fit, there's one aspect of the build here that I forgot to go over, but that, that affects the comfort a little bit. When you're wearing it on your head, it's always going to try and keep it to this angle. It's, I mean, if you have it stretched all the way out, it's ideally maybe trying to keep it flat, but you know, we don't all have heads this gigantic. If you have a narrow head, you're dealing with this. And look at that angle of the pad. This is where you would want it to be, right? And you would think it would go there because it allows the headphone to tilt. But because of the spring system, it doesn't. So you are going to get some resistance. It's not going to, it's not really going to sit flat against your head. You're always going to have more pressure on the bottom of the pads than a kind of flat seal. That being said, the seal on these is actually really, really good. The passive noise isolation is pretty incredible. I can barely hear anything. My voice is incredibly muffled. I can't hear my fan. I can't hear my PC. I hear nothing. So the noise isolation is great. But even then, I am getting, you know, just a slice bit of extra pressure at the bottom of the pad as opposed to it being more even. If it was more like that <laughs> and it wasn't trying to spring its way back, it would be even more comfortable. But overall, these are actually quite, quite comfortable. In terms of our cloud comfort scale, our scale of comfort, I'm going to give these a good solid eight. Eight clouds of comfort. They're right. They are very good. They could be better if not for that spring system. I'm not entirely sure why they did that. But otherwise, really, really good comfort. So the sound. This has the aesthetic and the build of a $1,000 headphone for sure. It's built immaculately well. It is beautiful. The sound is a little strange for me though. These are extremely transparent with their sound source. So once again, we have a headphone here that's very difficult to identify how it's supposed to sound because it sounds entirely different depending on what audio source you are listening from. Listening to this through a very linear source, something like an A90, it's going to sound like an extremely linear headphone. Listening to it through something that's more like a tube amplifier, you're going to definitely absorb a lot of that tube amplifier characteristics. And it, the list goes on and on and on. I, Out of all of my amps and DACs set up here on the desk in my listening area, every single one changed how this sound in a pretty dramatic way. It never once sounded the same. Even from linear amplifier to linear amplifier and linear DAC to linear DAC, normally when you have something that is super linear like that, it's the, the difference between the two can be pretty negligible, but with these, you can, you can get a definite difference. So it changes dramatically depending on how you are powering it and what you are listening to. So that being said, I'm going to talk about how it sounded in two different ways. And the first way is through my A90, D90 stack, because that is, at least out here on my desk, the most clear, linear, and best measuring setup I have for a listening experience. So that should, in general, provide the least amount of flavor and distortion and character and just be like the most honest experience. So we'll talk about how that sounded first. Through the A90 D90 stack, this is a very narrow headphone. You're not getting hardly any soundstage at all. It's 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 almost like it's just in your head. It's it's very very narrow. And it's interesting because I we've had very narrow headphones on here before. I have very very narrow headphones. 
a narrow soundstage is nothing new to me, but I, with this headphone more than probably any other, I have had the, the pull and desire to have more soundstage. I really wish this had more soundstage because I feel like there's certain characteristics of it that would benefit from just at least a little bit of extra soundstage. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but keep that in mind that this is a very narrow headphone and that some soundstage can help fix it. This is also a very cold headphone. It has a very reduced bass range. So if you're into, if you're a big bass head, this might not be the headphone for you, at least if you're going to be listening to it through a very linear source, like some sort of solid state situation, it ends up sounding very, very cold. It is definitely a recess in the bass range. The bass is still very, very good. It's very, very honest and true. It's not flavored. It's very accurate, but it is reduced. It is, you're not getting a whole lot of punch out of this. So because of that, it does seem to err a little bit on the side of neutral, but I'd say that the bass is so reduced that it's, it's not. You are getting a bit of a more analytical listening experience from this than you are, I'd say, a relaxed one. But it kind of goes a little bit too far because, again, through this A90D90 stack that we're talking about, through this very clean, clear, analytical, linear audio chain, these sound kind of sterile. They sound like they're a little bit metallic. Your, your mid-range is very, very nice. Mid-range is very clear and very, very forward. And vocals in particular are extremely clear. They're very intimate and they're very vibrant. They're, they're right front and center. And they're presented in a very analytical sort of way to the point where they almost have this sort of unnatural metallicness to them. It's almost like they're a little bit synthetic because it's like, it's so clear and it's so, it's so sharp in the vocals. It just, it has this weird, not supernatural feel to it, but it is extremely well performing. So the mid range is very, very nice. And your treble range, again, is also very, very nice. It's not particularly elevated. I'd say your mid range and your treble range are pretty even. And your detail is also quite good, but it's not the most. With it being such a cold headphone, I was expecting to have I was expecting it to have a lot more treble detail than it actually does. So that was a bit surprising. But the detail in the treble is decent. It's a good amount. I could use more, but it's it's a good amount. It's not the fastest in terms of how it responds, but it does a decent job. It is a dynamic driver, so it does have a bit of snap to it. And I haven't I wasn't able to encounter too much in terms of sibilance. Thank goodness. But every so often it did get kind of close in terms of dynamics it's extremely subtle you have very subtle dynamics in here it's not a very energetic sound it's not very exciting because of the weak dynamic performance and because of the pretty significant reduction in bass these are rather sterile to listen to, especially through a very linear, clear and honest audio source. They just sound a little drab. It's very clear, but there's not really anything there. Imaging is, was a bit of a mixed bag. Sometimes it felt like it was more forward facing with some, some, with some verticality, but other times it sounded like it was giving me a little bit of back noise as well. So it, I would say it's, it's, it's good. It doesn't separate particularly well though. I could hear generally where things were coming from, but it wasn't super crazy precise. It just kind of like, yes, there's sound there. There's sound there, but the image separation was not great. I feel like they definitely could have done a lot better with the image separation. And again, we might be able to fix it. So yeah, through a very linear audio chain, very sterile, a little bit metallic. It's, I guess you could say it's leaning towards a more analytical sound signature, but I just, I don't feel like it really has enough resolution or detail 
to make it work very well as a super analytical headphone. But what happens if you plug it into something like tubes? I'll tell you right up front, for me, playing this on tubes is was the fix. That made all the difference in the world for me. You plug this into some tubes, for me, I was using my Little Dot Mark III, not the best tube amplifier ever, but it certainly helped a lot with this. Warmer, not like you're elevating in your warmth, but it, it goes from a very cold recessed baseline to a much more natural baseline. It comes, it brings it back up, gives it a little bit more energy, a little bit more warmth, a little bit more punch without it going too far. So it was a heck of a lot more enjoyable and a lot more of a smoother listening experience. Your mid-range stayed very, very clear and intimate, but all of a sudden it has texture to it, has character to it, and it has a much more natural timbre. It doesn't have that same kind of metallic-y artificial sound, and it sounded a lot more natural, a lot more just smoothed out and real sounding, especially with vocals. The trouble range stayed pretty much unaffected. I didn't see really any, re I didn't hear really any reduction in the treble. So it didn't really become a darker headphone. It, the treble pretty much stayed the same, but we're, you're getting a, a lot more smooth, rounded off mid range, and you are getting a little bit more in that bass range that is getting elevated. So overall it becomes a much more enjoyable listening experience. It goes from a overall synthetic metallic -y sound to a much more acoustic sound. You're also getting just the slightest bit more soundstage. And as I said before, that helps a lot because a, the way that this is presenting sound, it just, it really benefits from having just a little bit of soundstage. Going with some tubes, it, it artificially gives you a little bit more, but just that tiny bit helps a lot. It just sounds a lot more immersive it sounds a lot more enjoyable and it allows for more separation in the imaging. We mentioned before how the imaging was not separated very well. Well, somehow giving it a little bit more space allowed for more separation. I was able to identify a little bit more clearly where certain things were. They just felt more separated and less condensed in general zones. And also with the tubes, I was able to get a lot better sense of a 360 degrees of imaging. So it wasn't as much forward facing and was able to get a lot more noticeable back noise. So imaging improved, soundstage improved, your bass range improved pretty significantly without it going bloated and ridiculous. In my opinion, these shine on a tube amplifier, which is strange because the way that these are kind of the sound that these are kind of going for seems to be a very analytical sound signature. They're trying to sound very clean, accurate, detailed, and audiophile-y, but they went a little too far with it. It needs to have a little bit of noise. <laughs> it needs to have a little bit of character. It needs to have a little bit of flavor in there because... You know, you can have the most accurate sounding headphone on earth, which these are definitely aren't. But if it doesn't sound fun, most people aren't going to listen to it. So I, putting these on an amplifier was the choice to make for sure. And I'm sure you go with a much better quality tube amplifier than my little dot. And you're going to have even, an even better time. Just having that extra oomph helps a lot. And I will also mention that... Power and volume are also a very important metric to how the sound performs. Listening to this through my phone, for example, it did fine, but it it just needs more power. You can power this through pretty much anything. It doesn't require power, but it does benefit from giving it more and giving it some more volume, not deafening volume, of course, but letting it letting that power come out giving it that extra oomph, it helps a lot. You're getting a lot more presentation in your sound, a lot more details coming out, a lot more dynamics start to happen. When you have it at kind of a middle volume with middle power, a lot of that starts to get lost. It's really interesting. At lower volumes, a lot of the potential of the headphone gets lost. 
you really need to have it cranked up a little bit and power a little bit more. Overall, I think it's an excellent headphone. It's beautiful. And through the right audio chain, it can sound very, very nice. But is it worth $1,000? That's really, really tough. Because, first of all, $1,000 is, for most people, a pretty big stepping point. Let's be honest here. Yes, I, I see all you, you, you audiophiles looking at me, sh rolling your eyes and shaking your head because you know that a thousand dollars is nothing. That oh, you got you're not getting the good stuff until you're at like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. I hear you, but for most people, <laughs> let's be realistic. A thousand dollars is a is a kind of a, a certain benchmark to reach, and I'm not entirely convinced that this is a great representation in terms of sound performance for a $1,000 headphone. Build looks sure. Yes, it's built very well. It looks really, really pretty. But the sound performance was just a little bit disappointing. Yeah, the tubes helped a lot. But comparing the Celestes with something like the Klipsch HP3s, it's, it's night and day. I know exactly what my preference is, and it's going to be the big wood beauties. And obviously it's a very subjective thing, but I think if you're going to be spending a thousand dollars or more on a headphone, it needs to have something special about it. It needs to start getting towards, towards something that is either extremely like ridiculous resolution and ridiculous clarity or ridiculous acoustics and, and timbre and characteristics that something that makes it sound beautiful and unfortunately this these don't really do either of those things it's just kind of flat it's just kind of sterile and it doesn't have the resolution or clarity to be considered in my eyes a reliable hi-fi experience they sound nice and they sound even better on tubes but they don't they still don't really match with some other stuff and i mean you, i i have headphones that are half this price that i enjoy more but you know that's gonna be up to you in any case there it is your one thousand dollar focal celestes i do like them and i am very glad i got them especially because i got them on sale but you know it's an interesting entry point one thousand dollars Oh boy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Links, as always, are in the description. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. I will see you next time.